This week's tech tip looks at everything drone related, importing Earth or mosaics, importing and cleaning point cloud data. So now I'm just gonna go through. So I've got a job. So we've gone out and flown the site. We've processed in PIX4D, which is the photogrammetry software that we use. And now I'm gonna bring in those files. So simply click on the drone topo guide, import the ortho mosaic. And the ortho mosaic is basically just a stitch together photo of the, um, the amount of photos that it took to fly the job. So let's say it was 100 photos for this job because it's a smaller size. Well, PIX4D goes in, processes and stitches all those photos together, creates that ortho mosaic and also a point cloud, which has all that elevation information that we need, which we'll see here in a minute. So there's the ortho one. I'm going to bring that in and it's already geo referenced, which is nice. So it falls into place. So let me just bring up the guide. I'll click on the G, that's a little shortcut, and create a new surface. So this one's gonna be called Drone Topo. And I like to date it, I believe today is the 26th. So that way, like you mentioned, Juan, we have the ability to have multiple surfaces. I can have multiple drone flights and compare as the project that, goes. That save color is near too, right? The, uh, yeah, you can save, default. right. You can save the default color. So, you know, that way, you can save it, you know, that same color for your next project. So there we can see just the value of having a snapshot of what the site looked like on any particular day, right? Again, documentation is key, right? We use the mobile apps. We use the drone to document the sites. The more documentation you have, the better when somebody comes back at you. All right, so let's bring up the guide again. I'm gonna enter a perimeter. So I can just snap to this perimeter, or if I just wanna put a perimeter in around the cleared areas, so that way I'm not having to go back and clean up the trees, you know, which in this case there is some on the overlap. I'm just gonna put a quick perimeter in so it makes my cleanup a little easier. You know, I can even go around all this pipe and stuff because they're actually doing the underground. I can right click, right click again, and I don't want a daylight line there. All right, so hit the guide now. Now let me import in the point cloud. So what's the point cloud you ask? Well, let's take a look. It's all those points that make up everything on the site. We'll leave it at dynamic. So we're basically downsampling that original point cloud in the areas where it's flat, we're creating a grid. So I'm gonna hit the guide and say transfer points. So now I wanna make sure I send it over to my correct surface, use the blue arrow send it over. So there's, you can see one, there's my point cloud. So you can see the trenches, you can see the equipment, there's a denser point cloud. So it maintains the integrity of the original point cloud in those sloped areas and those trenches. But in the flatter areas, it creates a grid as long as it's within a tenth of a foot. So it's a nice little feature. Let's hit the guide, trim points outside. So we're kind of just trimming out the stuff that we don't need. We don't need all those, five, all those points outside because they don't pertain to our project. Hit the guide again and remove obstructions. So now Juan, there's a couple ways I can do this. So I can clean, I need to clean up the data. So let me look at it in 3D first, just so you can see what we're dealing with here and see the accuracy of the drone data. So there you can see, you know, we've got the trenches, we've got stockpiles, but you can also see that equipment that needs to be cleaned up. So let me kind of run through real quick. So I got this dump truck. I can simply do a window select around it, hit delete on my keyboard and boom. Or I can put in an annotation line, which comes in handy again, if I'm gonna have multiple surfaces or multiple drone topos and I've got fixed structures. So let me bring up my line label. I wanna go to entry mode. Before I bring up my line label, then I'm just gonna hit the L, there's another hotkey. And then I can just call it clean up and spell it right, hit okay. Now I'm just gonna draw a little box around or you know wheel around here. So kind of go around pretty quick. And then I just need to make sure it's snapped shut. So I just make sure I turn on snap. Like you mentioned one, I've got my little snap circle, boom. So then I can just clean that up real quick. So if I just select it and I've actually got um, some annotation lines one that I've put in my other layer that I'm gonna utilize. So I'm gonna do a label selection and I can right click and say copy. And then I'm gonna to go to my drone topo and I can paste those in there. 
So now I've got, you know, pretty much all that stuff ready for cleanup because you guys don't want to sit here and watch me clean up this job, right? So I click one of them, do a label selection. Remember the trim tool that we use? Let's click on it. This time we're going to say remove lines, where one, inside or outside, 50-50. Absolutely inside, right? And, and, that, and that trim function works also for overlapping data. So, so that, yeah, I use that trim function all the time. So not only for drawing, yeah. but also for right, over, right. Over overlapping it, yeah, data. It, it, so it is a handy tool. tool and exactly. We, I use it a lot with the drone data, but you're right. It, it does come in handy in other places. So make sure you utilize that. And just make sure you're creating an enclosed area, right? Just snap that line shut. So remove lines inside. And now you can see all my points are cleaned up. So let's look at it in 3D view real quick. So now I've got a much cleaner site. You know, I might have a little more, but you can see those stockpiles and, you know, all the, the stockpiles from the trenches and the spoils and stuff. So now I'm just going to continue with the guide. Click the G key, contour the surface. I can leave the interval at one since I've got some relief, but I could change it to half a foot, hit the guide again. And let's copy these contours into our data lines layer, hitting the guide again. As you can see, I'm moving through pretty quick, but you know, it's that easy guys, dirt simple solutions. So now I can delete that point grid because I've got a copy of it, I don't need it. Plus I created those contours and it kept the high and the lows, right? It kept those spot elevations in there one. So don't worry about, you know, getting rid of that and thinking you're in, in um, losing the integrity of the data because you're not. We've created the, the uh, high and low points as well as those contours. So now I've got that. Let's hit the guide a couple more times. So now I can stage the surface. So what's that? Well, I can stage it into existing, but let's say, you know, we talked about doing other topos, right? Because part of the, the deal with doing progress topos is doing multiple topos over the life of the project. So as Juan mentioned, we have multiple surfaces, so we'd have multiple drone topos. If I only flew half the site, I could stage it into that. But in this case, I'll stage it into existing. But it's a cool feature to stage the data however you want. Bring up the guide one more time, Juan, and compute the volumes. Hit OK. Now I can compute drone topo against existing, or if I was trying to find out what's left on the site, drone topo against design, and boom, I'm good to go. So then I've got my updated quantities. And I can, you know, do my billings, whatever I need to do, let the owner know, hey, this job ain't going to balance. But you've got that information, you know, literally in the palm of your hand. So, you know, utilize the drone, find out more information about it. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And I know your salesman would, too.